So my name is Rusty, and I'm going to talk about Airport. But you may know I've kind of taken it to heart to create a bunch of extensions for DuckDB. So if you have extension questions or how to build them, I can answer those too. But I, all about this talk is really about a dream I had. It's really about putting DuckDB in a place where it makes access to data inside enterprises or around the world universal. I think it's a tool that can kind of replace everything else we have out there to provide an interface to data. But getting back to the airport extension, the best way to teach I've found is through analogy. And I travel in airports a lot. And hopefully some of you have used them, but here in the Netherlands it might be maybe just trains. But they let you go to faraway places, and you know, we, we all know these things because we've all kind of taken flights. So the airport extension extends that analogy to say, we can now have DuckDB go to remote servers, we can use Apache Arrow Flight, which is a great uh, open source format and protocol to talk to these other external sources, and we can both do select and insert, update, and delete. But you might say, well, where can I fly to? I mean, I want to know, how do I get to Florida? How do I get to California? I'm from America, so these are my geographical references. But airport can take you to all the places like this. Uh, and I know we just spoke about the lake house formats, so there's a lot of them. There's some hipster ones coming out. We can, we can talk to those, and uh, I'm going to show you an example of that as our first this morning. But the big question is, how does Aeroflight work? It works like this. DuckDB is on the left. We talk to a thing called an Aeroflight server that can either produce the data or return the data, or optionally can talk to the data source. Now, DuckDB currently doesn't really talk to RPC mechanisms. This is the change. Now we're going to start to re reach beyond the single core machine where we're typically running to other resources and other things over the network using gRPC. Why did I create it? And this is kind of in alignment with what Hannes and Mark were just saying. After writing so many extensions, I kind of got tired of writing extensions. I want to kind of lower the burden to build things into the system. Um, I want to go faster. Uh, I love to use Python. I love to use JavaScript. I, I, I love to use code that's already written. So if I can find a crate or a PyPy module already out there, that's what I want to use. The airport extension lets you do that. But the best way to illustrate it is going through some demos. And I have three today. We might, we'll probably get through the first two. The first one I'm going to show you is one of the most requested features that I think the DuckDB community has really expressed is, how can I do Delta Lake with write support? We have an attach call that basically says, hey, I want to talk to a flight server at this gRPC URL. We're attaching it as a database name called Delta Lake. Then you just go in here and you can do create schema and create table. And that's all the magic you need to know as a user of DuckDB, as an SQL user. There's other details that I could talk about, but we're going to keep it today really at the high level SQL uh, level. Um, and I'm happy to speak after about the lower level things. So for after that, you just do a general insert. It just works like any other DuckDB table. There's some differences, just like as if you travel to foreign countries, sometimes the laws are different depending on where you go. Transactionality may not actually follow with you to these external services, but we can talk about that. Um, so you can do inserts, you can do selects, updates, deletes, create table as, all your general fun stuff. And just to prove to you that this does work, here is the actual Delta Lake table on my local machine um, from those same queries. So that just kind of gets us out of having to have the in-process Delta Lake implementation not have write support. You can build this in in whatever type of scripting language you wish. Now, as for more details, this example used Python and Delta RS, which is the Rust implementation of uh, Delta Lake. And it, it does predicate pushdown. It has ca integration with the DuckDB catalog. And I'm also skipping over everything here on the gray lines. So we can do time travel. We can do road trains tracking. All these fun kind of real business professional features we're going to skip over. Um, we're not going to talk about how you can get rid of Databricks jobs and, uh, and run it with DuckDB, but you can. Um, so stay tuned. Now, looking back at this picture, we just spoke about extensions written in Go. Arrow is a really great package because it has implementations in all these other languages. So you can write flight servers today in these languages that I've listed. Um, I left out the Go logo. I apologize to all the fans of Go here. Uh, and we're also kind of going to skip over the details here. But the best explanation I have about Aeroflight is there's cookbooks on the internet that can teach you how to do it. Uh, for today, look forward to a future talk about it, but it's going to be kind of this meme here where I'm going to say, draw some circles and then draw the owl. So that's kind of the explanation you'll get this morning. Um, but 
Stay tuned. The second demo we have here is actually one close to my heart. So I've, I've done a lot of work in quantitative finance, and to say I'm a machine learning person is not really true, but I think we all are machine learning people, believe it or not. I really want to integrate a package called AutoGlueon, and it's a really great AutoML package, meaning it does all the ML magic for you uh, into DuckDB, because I think there's a big divide right now between people that use SQL and people that use Jupyter Notebooks. And I think those are really can be the same people. You don't always have to do all your ETL work in SQL and then hand it over to some developer and they're going to run it on, a, on a, a Jupyter setup to get your results. So the most useful example I could think of last night was let's predict the number of votes a Hacker News subscription is, uh, post is actually going to receive. So I have a new service called AutoGluon, which is a flight server that just integrates uh, AutoGluon. And it stores its data in here. We're going to create a table called HN Stories, which is a history of Hacker News posts and the number of votes that they received. I just grabbed this off of a, a Kaggle website. It was a single Parquet file. You guys understand how this works. You know, create a schema, create a table. We're already going. Now we're going to create a model. And the fun thing here is like we have this new table returning function called predictor fit, and it exists under the AutoGluon uh, database. We're going to give it the name of the model we're going to make the training data, which is the table name of where we just loaded, and the target column we want to predict called score. We'll say it's a regression problem. Regression meaning I want to know the value that will be predicted for that column. We'll give it 200 seconds to train the model, and I want a high quality model. Everybody hanging in there so far? All right. Here's where it gets fun. So let's put some examples in here. I want to kind of know what the predicted votes will be for these headlines of these posts. Like Gabber's going to post the DuckDB 1.2 release pretty soon. He needs to know, should he put new keywords in there? So rather than having him do a whole Jupyter Notebook and a whole bunch of like uh, feature engineering, just use this, my man. Uh, here it is. Select a title, the prediction, which will be the predicted votes, from predictor predict rows using the model name, and then this is a table in out function, so I can actually supply the data I want to send to the predictor. And that's really flexible. And the other thing I'm putting in here is we also have a, a factor here called the time of the post. So we can say, oh, is Wednesday better? Is Friday better? Is before lunch, after lunch? He can kind of find out what time that is. Here's the results. This is what you get. It's just like selecting from any other table. There's a title of the post and the predicted number of uh, votes that it will have. And that's it. You don't have to worry about model deployment, Python environments. It's pretty amazing, in my opinion. Now, I have some bad news for myself, though, because I was like, well, what happens if I put the airport extension on Hacker News? And as you can see, the score is only 12 there. You know, Gabber's headline of like DuckDB 1.2.0, that's 34. Clearly, Hacker News is going to care a lot about that more than this extension. So, I hope you like that. That's just kind of where airport can go. And all of that meant you're writing no C++ code. It's just Python code. And we're going to kind of give you good examples of that because it's already out there. I know there's a lot of people that do geospatial. And this is kind of our bonus demo, which I'm glad we're getting to. Geocoding is a big challenge. Geocoding is a process where you change an address into a latitude and longitude. Or you go in the reverse of saying, I have a latitude and longitude, and give me where I am actually located. Now, I wanted to know where the White House is. That's where 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is. Here's the latitude and longitude for that. Here is a, another example of here where we can have a geocoder service where we could take an address and then grab the current weather conditions. So I used to live in Miami Beach. This is the current weather as of last night down there. And this is a scalar function returned by airport. And the interesting thing about scalar functions is we're not invoking the remote uh, scalar function. We're actually going to get the vectorized batches and do those uh, requests. So it's not a one-to-one -one call to the remote RPC endpoints. This leads to a lot of great efficiency gains. Now you might say another term for this is called distributed scalar UDFs. And this is kind of a little bit more of a detail of the implementation. So I was at the office yesterday, and we wanted to just kind of give the simplest example. Here is just an example of a flight that uppercases the string we define an input schema. This is in Python, so this is a, uh, a definition of PA means pi arrow. The input is a string, the output is a string, and then process is just a reference to the next function I'm about to show you of how to actually perform that operation. Here's the, if you know Python, it's going to say, all right, I got a pi arrow table as my input. I'm going to return a list of rows on the output, all of them with a, a dictionary called result that just uppercases the values. And that's all you have to write to implement a new scalar UDF in DuckDB.
And here's the example of how it's actually called uh, down below. So it's just geocoder is a database name that we were working in, USA is the schema, and uppercase is the actual function. So in review, the feature list of airport can start at the basics, where you can list flights on the flight servers and take flights. Then we go up, as you, go, as you get familiar with the extension, you can go into catalog integration, which means airport can register tables, you can do selects and updates and deletes into those tables, because you can't really do a delete against a table returning function. Table returning functions are really just output only. Then you go, we just talked about scalar user defined functions, and you now have table in out functions, where you can kind of use a table returning function as a, a pipe. Airport is authenticated, which allows you to make different changes with regards to what users can see particular data. So if you have some users that can only see certain columns and other users that can have another set of columns, the server can make a decision on what data to return to them uh, based on their identity. So this allows you to do row level and column level filtering as well. So getting close to the end, when will it be ready? Uh, soon, it requires DuckDB 1.2. It's MIT licensed, so you can pull it right now off of GitHub. Um, I love it if you star the repo. It kind of gives me a feeling that people are interested and, and excited to, to do it. But come to the Discord and we'll talk about it. I think there's a, a bumbling type of level of interest that's out there. And uh, soon I'll kind of publish a few airport example flight servers to kind of give you all a head start on adding external services in this manner to use the extension. So I think we're ready for some Q&A. So I'm happy to hopefully give you some answers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rusty. Um, yeah. Uh, OK, this is a good question. Um, which of your many extensions are you the most proud of? Airport is the most fun. Like, yeah. that one is the one that I think the raw joy of having an external data set and then just having it into DuckDB without really doing much work is great. So I wrapped the entire AWS API. So there's, AWS has 6,341 different API calls. I put them all into a wrapper, and they're all now DuckDB tables as well. So you can do select star from your EC2 instances, and that really gave me yeah. a little bit of joy. But uh, it's, is it like asking somebody which, which of their children they like best? Is that, is that how it feels? Or uh, I guess, I yeah? guess. OK, I'm sorry. But I was really impressed because I think um, uh, people have mentioned this, that it's not yet trivial, let's say, to make DuckDB extensions, as you have really been digging through all of that uh, to make this work. Well, I would say, like, the, the GitHub DuckDB extension template is the best start. Yeah. So it's not, it's not terribly hard to get started, and there are examples. So if you're interested, just fork that repo and, and get started on that. Okay. So um, I have another question. Um, actually, by the way, everybody, great job asking questions. This is fun. And I don't have to run around with a microphone, so perfect. <laughs> um, how does Airport mesh with existing extensions like Spatial or HDFS? Uh, does it build on these, or is it completely separate? It's completely separate. So you can install multiple community extensions at any time. And Airport uh, is completely isolated. So if you're using Spatial, you can use Spatial and Airport at the same time. So if you grab data from Airport, you can run it through whatever Spatial function you'd like. Mm -hmm. Um, another question that I think really interesting is, which resources on writing DuckDB extensions do you find helpful? The C++ source code. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. I, I, uh, I, find, I find the best way to learn was reading the source code of others. Um, Sam, if you're here, I really have to tip my hat to Sam. He had... Uh, yes, up here. Yes, Sam is amazing. He wrote the original Iceberg and Delta Lake extensions, and he's written uh, one called UC Catalog. And whatever Sam writes, I will read, and then eventually it winds up in an extension that I that I create. And that, very nice. Um, then I'm going to read this one because it's more of a comment than a question. This extension rules. So somebody <laughs> said that. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad to hear that. And then somebody is trolling me and asking. Do you think of adding graph support to DuckDB in form of an extension? Oh, we are, it's already on the slides, guys. I mean, come back here to uh, this one right here. We have graph databases, Kuzu, Neptune, and Neo4j. You guys can add it yourselves, um, or we can, we can write it for you. So stay tuned. And a less licensing question, uh, how is the extension licensed? Well, Ap Apache, I believe, is the Apache license, and my mm -hmm. license is MIT, and they're compatible. So uh, it's just like DuckDB, I believe. OK. Yeah. OK, I think, um, and then not, maybe this is the most upgraded question, so I have to ask it. Um, can we use Airport to scale out DuckDB? 
Yes. You can, actually. So inside a select statement, you can go to multiple airport tables. So if you have a remote service that offers DuckDB on a different machine or a collection of DuckDBs running on different machines, you can just union them if you want to grab a result from all of those nodes. Um, or we could extend the extension to do multiple endpoints based on a, a list of hosts that you wish to query. So it's open source. We can do whatever we want. It's freedom. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think that's, uh, that's great. Obviously, you know, everyone who wants to ask more questions can grab uh, Rusty later. Yeah. Um, I'm very grateful for your talk. Thanks so much again. Thank you. And uh, talk to you later.